Hi, I'm Tony Caridi coming to you live from NAB 2013. I'm here with Paul uh, Tapper from Nugent Audio. Paul, thanks so much for joining. How are you doing? Hi, Tony. I'm good. Cool. Um, so you are Chief uh, Technical Director at Nugent. Um, so you must have your hands full with uh, AAX porting at, at the moment. Well, yeah, it's been a busy time. It's been a, a quick job to try and get it done. But we think we've done most of the work on it, apart from testing. So we are looking forward to releasing it around the same time as you guys properly release uh, Pro Tools 11. Excellent. Now, just for those um, out in cyberspace who are uh, not familiar with, with what you guys do, if you could tell us a little bit about you know how you, how you guys came to be and, and entered the world of, of metering and, and uh, sure. the other tools that you make. Yeah, we started off as um, a, a small company in 2004. Um, we were making software for the music industry, primarily. Um, um, Co-founder uh, Jonathan Scorer was a DJ and uh, a music master engineer. So um, he and his friends needed tools for the music they were creating. We started making stuff like that. More for fun, really. But I realized there was a market for it and ended up making money out of it. So it's kind of grown into what we do now. But nowadays, we're more focused on audio tools for post-production and for broadcast. So there's been, uh, so let's talk about the, the tools that you're, that you're making. You've got a suite of uh, loudness monitoring uh, yeah. tools. Now there's, there seems to be a big sea change in terms of the requirements, uh, both in Europe and in the US. Can yeah. you explain a little bit about um, what, you know, what are these new things that uh, post-production uh, engineers have to face today? Sure. Um, it is it's a complete revolution that's happening in terms of broadcast audio. Um, which is the, the revolution started really in Europe, and laws have been passed throughout Europe now, uh, saying that the the loudness level of adverts have got to match the loudness level of the broadcast material around it. So you have to measure the loudness using a specific set of um, standards and tools. So that's what we provide is tools for measuring that loudness level. And what we've seen in Europe is when the legislation first comes in broadcasters solve the problem with payout boxes which squash the audio and keep it all at the same loudest level. Right. But that's eventually seen as unsatisfactory because it gives you a very flat sounding channel. Right, all the dynamics are sucked out of yeah. it, it just sounds squashed. It's all squashed down. Yeah. So gradually as people relax and become used to loudness measurement, it moves back up the production chain until eventually it ends up with the post-production engineers or the mix engineers having to use a loudness meter. Now in the US, with the CARM Act, that's going to start happening in the US as well. Over the next year or so, everyone who uses Pro Tools for broadcast will have to have a loudness meter. So for you, that means way more uh, users potentially are going to need these tools. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. And probably have to be educated in how to use them this yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, is it an easy, something that's easy, relatively easy to get um, acclimated to? Are there certain presets that you guys build into facilitate you know it, it for, for the engineers for engineers when they first come across it because they've been used to working in a different way we've seen a variety of different reactions from people but quite often there's a fear about the change but engineers that we've spoken to maybe a month or two months after they've made this transition to loudness metering love it because it's freed them from having to race in the loudest war, turning the compressor up and squeezing the mix up higher and higher. And it means they can do an open mix, they can just use their ears, checking the meter every now and then. But the meter agrees with what their ears are saying a lot more than the old systems. So in the end, people love it, but it's, it's a sort of hurdle they've got to get over. Understood. And if this is something that the metering, is this something you have to do in real time or can you, can you expedite it in an offline process? Well, we recommend doing both. We recommend that when you're doing your mix, you use the real-time meter to get an idea of the overall loudness contours that you're getting. But then at the end, you need to hit a national number for compliance. So we recommend that you use an offline tool then to get it exactly right. And that's done through Audio Suite? Yeah, so you can use the RTAS or the AAX for um, the real-time metering, and then you can use AAX or Audio Suite for the offline right. fine effects. Well, that's uh, that's really exciting. At the show, you guys are uh, um, 
Are, are you showing anything new here? I mean, I guess the, the main news is that you guys are really close with your AAX development, which is yes. really exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're excited about having um, got AAX ready. Um, we're excited about um, Media Composer 7 coming out. And um, we're excited to have this loudness toolkit available for people because they're going to need it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for your time. Where can people find more information? The website so you is? You can visit us at www.newgenaudio.com. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Paul. Thanks, everybody, for watching us.